All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Fruits, Fruits Basket, Basket Season 1, Episode 15. The New Opie and ED were glorious. They were so good. Yes. And uh, all that character work on Miji. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. Uh-huh. Yuki. We had a lot of sadness the, last the, the episode. Friends, you mm -hmm. know. Yep. Oh my god, yep. sadness indeed. Like, Anna, uh, way to go for, for spotting what's up, you know? Your, your nose, yeah, your wave sense was on point. Mm -hmm. But but now we have Kyo almost kissing Toru while she's asleep and then uh, apologizing. But then apologizing and then Yuki having the whole thing with the hat and whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Huh. And very much uh, an air of guilt or regret or chaos from Kyo. From Kyo. Yeah. I. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I. Hmm. I really hope we get into what's going on with him because I. I. I have feelings. My Hana waves are. Mm. Yeah. They're sending you a fierce <laughs> message. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and oh, it seems it seems troublesome. Hmm. Oh my. But uh, very much like to see uh, just some general uh, Toru focus as well. Yeah. She's the main character after all. That's always a good and, thing. And uh, the ways in which she kind of moved and interacted with both kind of halves of the previous episode hmm. gave us some, some pretty cool stuff. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below. Then come back here for the discussion. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah, this was a this was a funny episode, but we have our surprise uh, little vacation <laughs> trip. Yeah. But I like that we have so many characters involved in this. This is not a quiet setting. No. It has basically the 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 two trios basically. Yep. And, and in fact, she... once it got quiet, Toru started getting really concerned. Mm -hmm. Understandably so, because that doesn't happen often. Yeah, that does not happen often. Now, it's a follow-up to the whole stuff with the grave visit in the yep. previous episode. Mm -hmm. Makes which sense. Which basically tells us that this is something that will get addressed eventually. But as of right now, the boys' response to it is to kind of shut down. They're not ready for that. Yeah, they're yeah. not ready for that. They need mm -hmm. to kind of process their own stuff in there. Yep. And Toru would kind of need to adjust a bit of who she is. And instead of pointing at herself and being like, oh, I must be at fault here be like uh do a healthy form of confrontation and be like hey what's going on mm -hmm. talk to me yep and thankfully we got to that eventually you know mm -hmm. even if it was through toru's roundabout way of oh it must be you right. know problem must be with me and all that stuff and you know slipping yeah. down the down the slope and all and all that but yeah so that, okay. that chaos basically gave us a little bit of a point for the the boys to steer her in a different direction right because they, they also didn't necessarily be completely honest yeah. into why they're not feeling well right and the fact that they don't want to talk about it that's totally understandable cool. yep. from an episode standpoint it does kind of it um it's it's basically spending a good amount of time to give atmosphere and say that these characters aren't ready for that but then that makes me feel like the meat of the episode is kind of more in the second half with ima and and just the the trio of the adults and how they talk about things yeah i, I think the main point that we got out of the young trio here is that toru and Yuki specifically dropped some very interesting kind of characterization things. One yeah. that Toru um, will quite easily blame herself for things when she has no evidence to support it. She yep. just assumes that that's something that she needs to take responsibility for. Right, because she won't. Uh, she absolutely refuses to believe that it could be someone else's problem. Right. Yeah. But the reason for that, I think that they're hinting at here is that she is so terrified of losing mm -hmm. the familial kind yep. of connection, the consistency, the safety, and the feeling of trust here that she was scared. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's why she responded in that way. Yep. Like, the idea of it being awkward is something that I think many of us can relate to. The idea of when you're in an sure. awkward situation and you don't know why, but you can just tell that the vibe is awkward. Mm -hmm. You know also that there's not necessarily some easy solution that if you do this thing, suddenly it won't be awkward. So therefore, it perpetuates the cycle sometimes where you're like, oh no, it, it's going to remain awkward. Right. Because there's no way around that. But then on the Yuki side of things, he said something once they got out to the lake that seemed... It was seemed, very particular. It seemed very particular. And then Kyo kind of did almost like a, a jab joke yeah, at like, him like, about it. What? You? Yeah. Yeah. And Yuki said... 
that he doesn't like people that rely on others to help. That's that seems almost antithetical to like Yuki's experience. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because wasn't there a point when he was the one that seems to be like yeah. at home well, and like kind of insulated? And he's specifically here, you know, basically crashing at Shigure's place because he doesn't want to be at home. Yeah, he is exactly. Accepting help. Like like that's the kind of thing that I would expect a lot more from Kyo. Right? Because he has kind of like the fierce independence of, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out and train for four months. I'm going right. to, you know, her. Right. But right. in some ways, I feel like Kyo doesn't have a self acceptance problem in the same way that Yuki does. Right. Yeah. Kyo has kind of more resolved himself a little bit, but he hasn't resolved other people in his life as much. That's why he's maybe so mad at Yuki. Sure. But Yuki, Yuki has got some very internalized stuff here if uh -huh. he believes this, because I believe that he believes it. Yeah, he said that with conviction. Like, right, like right. Yuki is usually very um not not passive, but um he's 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 a soft person, right? Yes, exactly. So he doesn't say anything with a lot of like harshness to it. And and harshness not necessarily in a negative way, but with like right. with like bite and 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 you know, emphaticness, right? Yeah. Look at the way that he talks with everyone except Kyo, basically. Mm -hmm. Look at the way he talks with everyone else when he's in his mode of just just casual yep he is almost unnaturally charming in right. a way that almost makes me feel like he's got a bit of a people pleaser kind of style sure. of doing things and even with kyo he usually does it as more of like a um like verbal sparring kind of a thing that yeah. actually truly like being aggressive with him for the sake of aggression. Right, right. It's more it's more mocking and teasing yeah. than true uh, going for the jugular. Mm -hmm. And this was, I think, a, a moment where he said something that maybe he didn't even mean to say and he just blurted it out in the midst right. of his frustration with Kyo. And Kyo immediately picks up on there being some kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> you're and, kidding, right? Yeah, yeah, you're kidding. And, and says that, you know, you know, Shigure used to piggyback ride you, give you piggyback rides everywhere. And I'm like, in my mind, I think, oh, that's a cool little fun kid mm. memory. But then I re realized, like, wait, 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 wait. wait. Everywhere? Like, everywhere? Yeah. Like, like, And also, Shigure specifically, Shigure is the one that we've seen helping Akito uh, in a way that makes it seem like well, maybe it, there was a point that he did this kind of stuff for Yuki. Yeah, and was just possibly. kind of helping him out because piggyback rides in general are more of like a ooh, it's a fun thing. Yeah, you know, you're, the kid falls asleep in the car, and so yeah. you know, okay, yeah, or or they're tired at the at the park, you know. But if it's something where it's not where it's for fun, but it's because he needs to give right. Yuki that. Because Kyo wouldn't say that if it was just the oh yeah, run me down the hallway really fast. You yeah, know? that's like, that's not a jab then. Right. It's a jab if it's something that Shigure needed to do. Right, maybe a true Maybe felt relying, like obligated yeah. to do. And it was something where, yeah, exactly, Yuki yeah. needed Shigure to yep. do that. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. And then in their whole present situation, well, what the hell have you been doing with Toru? Yep. yep. <sighs> you, you want to you tell us that you haven't been relying on Toru? Mm -hmm. The times when she leaves, you're, you're beside yourself, right? Uh-huh. So... Where's that coming from, dude? Mm -hmm. Like I think it's some I think it's some very internalized stuff that he hasn't accepted yeah. within himself. I think that Yuki's um problem, his flaw, if I if I could if I could nail it down to anything, is that he puts on um he puts on a bit of a faux happiness, a faux sense of like being just okay and having it all mm. together. And I think he's probably the one of the ones that has the most kind of like, like past trauma and shit. Like the okay. idea of Akito being something that he's terrified of. Yeah. And they're like past together and the creepy scene that we saw. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. I, I feel like, I feel like Yuki's thing is that there was a point where maybe he needed to rely on Akito and yeah. he never wants to do that again. And that is the whole point that he came to Shigure's place, right? Because he doesn't want to have to rely on people. Now, there's the catch-22, right? Because mm -hmm. he has to rely on Shigure in order yep. to not rely on, like, the rest of the Soma family. Yeah, so maybe he has some... But, 
maybe he kind of hates himself that he needs to do that. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, and I feel like that would also <gasps> give explanation for why he engages in the verbal sparring with and stuff Kyo. with Kyo. Because oh. otherwise, like like Kyo kind of does take care of himself. Right. It and he's yeah. like, how can you do that? Exactly. Oh, because 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 there there were there were two things that made me like two two potential vibes that I got from like mm -hmm. why Yuki would really engage. Or maybe maybe three. One is that it's um it's a, a, a display for the people around him, right? Toru, yeah. you know, Shigure, or, you know, things like that. But that really feels like it holds more water once Toru shows up, but that was something that they had as a dynamic since way before, right? Sure, sure. The other one is that it's a thing of kind of uh, like like pride, where he's like, ah, mm. I, know, I know how to press his buttons to basically put him down, and that makes me feel good, right? Okay. Well, you know, sort of like the, 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 the brotherly competitiveness, you know, like of just, all right, who's who's better, right? But okay. because Kyo is the one that constantly brings that energy to it, he's like, sure, I can play that game, you know? Mm -hmm. But then the other one is that, well, it, it, it doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. That it has to be something else other than what we've seen so far. Okay. And if it is some kind of, yeah, internalized self-hatred or whatever, you know, thinking that Kyo, well, and, and I think they kind of said that, didn't they, when they were, um, I can't remember, I think it was Toru and Yuki when they were on the bridge in the, like, way earlier, and he was in his rat form, and he talked about how you, how Kyo had everything that he wanted, right, mm. because he was, he was able to be separate from the family, mm -hmm. and maybe this is just an extension of that, you know, yeah. that, that independence, and, and yeah. he realizes that he can't be independent right now, so, yeah. And, and in some ways, Toru will be the one that will teach him that it's okay to rely on people. And sure. maybe the reason why Toru is someone that he feels like he can rely on is because she's outside the Soma family. Right. She doesn't have all that attached baggage mm -hmm. by having the name, basically. Yeah, What what and what uh, healthy relying can look like. Because mm -hmm. I get the feeling that Yuki has seen plenty of unhealthy relying either from Akito sure. or just... Just from himself because because he was he was forced to kind of right sure. maybe he had to rely on akito at some point you know yep who knows that makes sense and that that's absolutely something that he would want to get away from but. yeah and then the way that this kind of ropes back into kyo is the idea that yuki could be someone that he really understands and yet he looks up to sure and maybe on some level the idea of him constantly wanting to fight him you know, constantly wanting to show that he is like, you know, uh -huh. on his level, basically. Right. Is kind of a way of so saying like, hey, you stop like, you know, bringing yourself down so low. Like, I, I look Ooh. up to you. Like, Ooh. I, I. That would be a, that would be cool. I'd yeah. like to see how they, they would handle that. Yeah. But okay, on the adult side of things, though, mm -hmm. I, I, I am a, I am a showing up. Just always a treasure. I, I love him so much. He is a treasure himself. He is. Yeah, he is. A, he's the sex god himself. Just, yep, that's just right. showing up, ah, is is beautiful. Now, and I love the, the reasoning for how he got there. Yeah, the reason for how he got there him. was just nah. I talked with a fifty-three-year-old maid. Mm -hmm. Why yep. does he know the exact age of this maid, and not say specifically the name? Like, like I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> he's just wonderful. Now. He didn't say the context with which he was talking to that right. three year old maid. A really random little observation here. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that Shigure I calls think I know what you're gonna say. Oh yeah. really? Oh keep going. Just guess. One word. That he called Hatori over because of the wedding. No, 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 no. This oh. is completely disconnected, random oh. observation there. I mean that that could be it. Yeah, yeah. But um no, he calls Hatori Tori san. And then Shigure calls Hatori Hasan, and they complete the two halves of the name. Oh. Almost like they each have claim to half of Hatori. Oh, that's and cool. I just thought that was a funny little thing that I noted. I'm like, wait a minute. That's fun. He has a different nickname for Hatori than Shigure does, and yet they that's both nice. literally have half of the name. <laughs> I, I like, like it. I don't know. It was just no, fun. no that, that's great. That's <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Because I love the way you can tell that they both 
really need Hattori as like their oh, grounding yeah. anchor. Right. And yet Hattori is the one with all the pain and suffering. Yeah, he's like, that's sure, obvious. Like, let me be the anchor. I'm already getting tugged in I'm six ways. I'm down the abyss anyway. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. no way I can fall any deeper. Right. I'll never get mo moved or budged. All your, you know, issues and stuff. Yeah, pile them on me. What's, you know, what's a, what's a butterfly on top of what I have yeah, going on? And yet we can tell that they both want him to be happy. Mm -hmm. And like, I loved, I am a little entreating him to be like yep. come on like i'm rooting for you like i want you to be two thousand times happier i'm like one thousand isn't guys. enough yeah that was just awesome like that's one the of, kind of aggressiveness they were talking about right exactly <laughs> you know <laughs> you i aggressively want you to be happy not i aggressively want you to do the things that will make me happy mm -hmm. um but in in a in an ensemble cast like this yes. and I've, I've mentioned this before but the way that the characters get brought into the episodes yeah. is something that I very much like keep an eye out for, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's something where it can, I totally understand if there's a show that has a billion characters and they're like, Hey, we just need all the characters to be present because otherwise like the amount of scaffolding within the episode that you yep. would need to do in order to get all the characters there gets so that then you can have them interact with each other is insane. You'd yeah. never get anything done. Right. But having something as simple as Shigure being like, you know what, Hattori, we don't usually have many reasons for Hattori to be present in the episode. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's the wedding of, you know, his, his ex, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rope in, him into yep. being here. And that makes it even more meaningful when he specifically kind of strong arms the, the main three mm -hmm. into having this happen. Yep. Because then he's like, no, no, no. It's not just for it's you. It's not just for you. It's also for Hattori. Yeah, Shigure is amazing. Yeah, I, he's I, awesome. I, I love the way he also brought the books, and mm. yet some of them were his shitty, you know, little, like, <laughs> romance novel. <laughs> but like, Hattori like, reads through three of them. Yeah. Uh, Hattori goes through a whole bunch of them, and he's just like, oh, okay, I yeah. can kind of All read. Right. And, and then just out. Yep. Sleeps. Like, and just the idea of, like, yo, everyone needs to sleep, yo. Mm -hmm. Just, like, relax. This is something that he really needs he's going through a lot right and now. sometimes you just need to read three you know shitty books back to back and then <laughs> and then conk out you know how like, is it revolting you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that was so perfect but then he still reads two more and then he know? reads more yeah, yeah exactly yeah. uh-huh yep. uh i love these three like mm -hmm. uh, yeah mm -hmm. they are they are just wonderful That's also a treat Mayuko or Mayukun. Yeah. The one who was only with Shigure for a month before Ugh. broke up with him. Now, what I what I love about this here mm -hmm. is that I don't remember if they ever gave us the name of the teacher before this episode. I don't think but so. But the way in which we came back to the school yep. and had all the students uh -huh. being like, ah, great teacher. Mayuko. Uh, Mayuko sama. Yeah. Uh, or Mayuko sense. Wait, My Mayuchan sensei. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. They're like, hey, be more polite to your teachers. Address me as great teacher, Mayuko. Yep. <laughs> and then the way the way they followed up there, just, oh, we're getting the honey. Oh, great teacher, Mayuko-sama. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, the exposition in this show yeah, like, it's fun. is really good. Like, yeah. it's, very, it's very sneaky. And if you can deliver really specific exposition without the audience realizing that it's really specific exposition all the better like the the example of you know oh i hate it i i hate it i hate people that have to rely on others you know that mm -hmm. yuki said like that's great you know and and kyo giving the the you know the shot back across the bow of what you know uh shigure had to give you piggyback rides all the time you know what are you talking about but with the ah yes mayu the girl who dumped you after a month and all that stuff. They go on this tirade about who she is. And I absolutely... It's all just jabbing at Shigure. It's all just jabbing fun. at Shigure, which I absolutely believe that they would do. We don't need to have this character's introduction be a thing in order for those jabs to mm. totally make sense and fit in the episode, right? Right. And then when we get, like, her reintroduction, like, you know, the introduction that, like, she might actually be more of an ongoing character than just right. the homeroom teacher or whatever, then it's like, oh... Okay, awesome. Like it's it's yeah. that it's that just cherry on top that we didn't necessarily know we needed. Yeah. And then they did the classic thing of showing the picture mm -hmm. next to her. Yeah. Showing that well, she was able to be there for the wedding. Yep. Which is good. Mm -hmm. But she's still working on holiday and says, Well, maybe next time you might find the one. Yeah. She's talking about herself. Like 
He's <sighs> looking. He's looking there. If we get some adult romance in this show, <laughs> you're just like, oh, oh, yes, oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Just give me Bring more. It. Yeah. Yes. I I really love the idea mm -hmm. that Shigure, someone who seems to be like, in a weird way, of all of them, I understand the idea that you could call them all cursed, right? Oh, but Shigure okay. seems to be the one that actually seems cursed. Mm. Like he has this little twisted bit of chaos in him that looks like it's something that could fracture him at any moment in the way that he moves and acts and stuff. Okay. And that he just seems too. He seems yeah. too. Sometimes he's super wholesome, and other times it's like, you are a cold son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the idea that this homeroom teacher. Mm -hmm. is, you know, still looking. Yep. And they had a breakup at one point, but they were with each other, with each other for a month. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know adult relationships are complicated. And, yep. You know, people get back together after times of coming into an understanding of who they are and then mm -hmm. who they want and yep. what they want. And, and then mm -hmm. on top of all of that, we have the other very complicated relationship. Mm. And that's with Shikare's editor. <laughs> I, as far as a, a gag goes in this show, it's amazing. I love it because yeah. because on the one hand, there's a part of me that's like, okay, mm -hmm. how much of this is the mangaka just being like, yep. Shout out to all you like overworked, underappreciated editors. editors out there. You know, I'm sorry, my own editor, for all the times I put you through hell. You know, yep. like just thank you for always being there for me and stuff. But but Sugar Age is being like. No, I just disappear. You know, don't, don't try. look for me. Don't look for me. <laughs> it's just, oh, oh, what's going on? I have to I'm, hear her panicked call in the dub. Oh, yes. I, I've, I've yes. heard it um, since before this, um, uh, before this episode. Um, I heard, uh, what's his name? Ayame's voice mm -hmm. in the dub. And it's incredible. It's beautiful. An absolute oh God. wonderful gem. Yeah. And, <laughs> and yet... I think the editor's voice of just pure, just panic. Yep. Like, Why? What are you doing? <laughs> you, you promised you have it done, right? You're going to submit it on time, right? <sighs> oh, I, I have to. I have to. Yep. But we're still here. We are. So we can carry this over into the next episode. But why are we still here? Mm. Just to suffer? Mm. 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 We shall see. We will. We shall see. So, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.